Hey everybody, welcome back to another Dokkan Battle video, and for this video I wanted to kind of go over how to build a team in Dokkan. I see that uh, as a question a lot on Reddit and on Twitter. Uh, some new player joins the game, they say, how do I build a team? I have all these units, I don't really know what to do. So I kind of wanted to go over, you just joined Dokkan, you just pulled whatever unit, and you're ready to build a team, you don't really know where to get started. So... That's what this video is going to go over. The first thing I want to cover is that if you are a brand new player, what I would recommend doing first is going to the events tab and going over to the story section as soon as it loads. And every day uh, during the weekday, there will be these special Ginyu Force and Team Bardock training events. You can complete these events every day each one will have a different character, and you will be able to farm up these teams and awaken them. And this this will give you, uh, doing both will give you an LR, so for the Team Bardock team, it gives you this LR Team Bardock. And for the Ginyu Force team, it gives you the LR Ginyu Force, the tech one led by this Goku Ginyu here. There is actually another free-to-play Ginyu LR that is obtained through Battlefield, but for the purposes of this video, I just want to go over... Uh, this one that you get for free from doing these missions. So, every day, as you can see here, it tells you right here that Sunday and Monday, that starts at the Sunday reset at 6 o'clock central, um, it starts, you can start farming up Birder, and then Monday at the 6 o'clock reset, you can get Goldo, and then Tuesday is uh, Ginyu, Jace is then the next day, and then Raccoon, as you can see right here on the schedule. And the Bardock squad follows the exact same pattern. So you can get each of those characters and their hidden potential orbs. They actually use their own exclusive hidden potential orbs. So you don't have to use any of your own, which is great if you're a new player. So once you get those teams farmed up, you will be able to build them here in the team section. You can use the Ginyu as your leader. Mine is a little different because he's easy aid, which you can do after you farm up both the Ginyu and the Team Bardock squad easy A's. Uh, it should, or I'm sorry, not easy A's, but just the, the units. Uh, so you go through the run. It'll drop the card. You'll then go to your box and you'll have to run it a few times. And then eventually you will be able to uh, train them up. You want to get their super attack to level 10 which means you need that unit plus nine additional copies to train into them to get their super attack to level 10. And then you can need to get four more copies to feed into their hidden potential system so that you can then rainbow them with the orbs that you've been collecting as you do the stage. Um, as far as the hidden potential builds on these units, uh, everybody's going to tell you something different. Just do kind of whatever makes you feel good about them, honestly. Uh, hidden potential systems are never really going to make or break you. Uh, I like dodge on pretty much all of these units, um, but whatever you decide to do is probably not fine. Most people are probably going to tell you crit or additional because those are you get a lot more value out of them in the hidden potential system, but that's something for another video. So to recap, if you're a new player, uh, every weekday you can go to the event tab, go to the story section, and then farm up the Ginyu Force and the Team Bardock units each day. Uh, the schedules are right here. You can see them when they'll be up, which units you can get on which days, and farm up those teams. If you're a new player, I cannot stress enough how important it is for you to farm these up. It'll give you a great team to run with and just complete very basic events that you need to do to awaken your more powerful units that you will actually use in endgame content. So next up, once you kind of get past that part and you're like, okay, now I'm ready to work on my actual summon units, what I would say to do is you need to focus on uh, the new 200% leaders. So if we go over here to my character list, I actually have a tab made for the 200% leaders. So if you just joined uh, this week, February 5th, 2023, the most recent 200% leader that you can obtain is this Kid Goku. And the, like I said, these are the units that you really want to be re le building your team around because they have the most powerful leader skills in the game at the moment. 
we come over to this kid Goku, we can click and hold on the leader skill icon and read here. It says that he leads Dragon Ball Saga, Youth, or Exploding Rage category, and he gives them three key, HP attack and defense 170%, and this is where the actual 200% leader part comes in, and that if they're also on the Dragon Ball Seekers or Bond of Friendship category, you get an additional 30% to HP attack and defense. So if you're on Dragon Ball Saga and Dragon Ball Seekers, you would get a full 200% to your stats. And that's why these characters are the most important right now, because that is the highest leader skill buff that you can get in the game at the moment. So uh, maybe you joined on New Year's um, around the time that Ultimate Gohan and Orange Piccolo dropped. These are other great units to build your teams around. They're very powerful. Well, one of them is very powerful. Uh, Gohan is very good if you pulled him. You know, he's still a 200% leader that you can build around. And he does lead a pretty accessible category with superheroes. That's every, like, super class character that's kind of like a protagonist in Dragon Ball Super. So I can actually pull that up right here. So as you can see, it's got, like, your Gammas, your Trunks and Vegeta, your UI Goku. Kind of like the stars of Dragon Ball Super are in this category. So that's like a good team to build around. It's going to be getting a lot of modern units. And then hybrid Saiyans are any Saiyans like basically born from Vegeta and Goku. So that's going to be your Trunks, Gohan, Goten, characters like that, Pan. Uh, they're going to fall into the hybrid Saiyans category. So that's kind of what you want is to build around these 200% leaders. So uh, once, once you, like I said, you go build up your Ginyu team. And then once you have that built up, you can then do the Dokkan events to awaken these characters. So if you see here in this character growth tab, I got to this, let's say, for if you're a brand new player, you're probably going to be looking at this kid Goku right here. Um, the most important thing that you want to do even like to all your units is to Dokkan awaken them. So to do that, you first have to Z awaken, and that's just going to take these basic metals... Um, clicked off of it let me get back to kid goku here so that's going to take these basic medals most of these you'll just get through playing the game so if you're brand new just hop into quest mode clear all of that that's going to give you a ton of stones um and it'll give you a bunch of resources and most of these you'll just grind up naturally by playing the game these are not difficult to obtain whatsoever after you get those metals and awaken them to this UR state, you will then want to awaken them again with the Dokkan Awakening by completing their Dokkan event. And this is where, if you're brand new, that those Ginyu Force teams and the um, Team Bardock team are really going to come in and help you with these Dokkan events. Those two teams, as far as I know, can clear, especially if you're able to easy A them, which you can do after completing both teams. Those teams are able to clear all of the Dokkan events in the game, no problem, so you should have no issues awakening these characters. So, uh, once you kind of figure out who you want your leader to be, it just depends on when you joined, what 200% leaders you have. If you don't have a 200% leader, there are still some good leads in the game that aren't straight up 200% leaders. Um, off the top of my head let's say you're new and you bought the new beginners pack in the shop um, I believe you can trade in for AGL PyCon as one of the characters he's a good leader to grab if you're brand new if I can oh he's not I'm in the wrong tab that's why I couldn't find him sorry about that so that AGL PyCon is a great unit to grab where is he I can just type him in here PyCon there he is so this PyCon right here, he leads Connected Hope, which uh, that category isn't super great. But if you notice, his secondary leader skill here is just Super Class. That means any unit that says, like, Super up here um, in this little diamond can be run on his team. So that's going to encompass most of the characters in the game because we have much more Super Class characters in the game than Extreme. So that gives you a lot more freedom when building your team. Um, so that's, like, a good way to look at it when building your teams so prioritize the 200 percent leaders if you have them but if you do not then you definitely want to go for a team that you can just put a bunch of characters on that you have 
which brings me into my next point here is whenever you're picking what team to build around, like let's say uh, you joined last year in like the November, December kind of era and you pulled, let's say you pulled this Trunks and Vegeta and you pulled like the Heroes unit and let's say you just got lucky and you pulled um, Kid Goku from the Kid Goku banner. The next thing you want to look at is, okay, how many characters do I have that are actually on their leader skill? So let's click on Trunks and Vegeta here, and we look at Bond of Parent and Child and Future Saga are their main leader skills. If we go down to their detail list, we can look at Bond of Parent and Child. This is a very extensive category that encompasses most of probably the good units in the game. You should have no trouble finding you know, free characters to grind up, uh, summonable units that you can fit onto this leader skill. Meanwhile, you have like the heroes units. Let's say you did one or two multis on the heroes banner and you're able to pull like this Goku. Well, what he leads is crossover and full power. And those, you'll notice that crossover, it does have some units on it, but most of these are Dragon Ball Heroes units, which unless you really summon on that Dragon Ball Heroes banner, you're probably not going to have most of these. So that's kind of a very limited category. And then you have the full power, which is also very limited. If you notice, it's really stacked here with like uh, brand new LRs. And most of them, honestly, the full power category is just not one that you want to build around right now. So you would be better building around a team like Trunks and Vegeta, who lead a much more extensive category, than one like this Goku, who leads a very limited category. So the easiest way you can look at that is like, let's say we want to build around Trunks and Vegeta. So I'll just go to my favorites list, I'll select my category, and up here you can type in Bond of Parent and Child. You'll see it pop up here. If you're wondering what these two buttons up here do, the full match means, like let's say I want to find somebody on Bond of Parent and Child and Bond of Friendship. That will pull up the characters on both of those categories. Or that like those characters have both of those categories. But let's say I want to pull up all of the characters on both of those categories. So kind of like a, it's basically like an and and an or button. So I want bond of parent and child and bond of friendship. Or I can change it to partial match and that'll change it to bond of parent and child or bond of friendship. Which is a much larger list as you can see. 527 characters versus 239. So for the purposes of this, though, I just want to look at Bond of Parent and Child and Future. So this would be Trunks and Vegeta's full team, and you'd be able to sort your box and see, okay, how many characters on here do I have that fit on that team? And then once you kind of figure that out, you can figure out, okay, what units do I want to awaken? Um... And once you kind of, you go, okay, so I like this unit, like this, I like this great Saiyan man, I like this Krillin, and you just kind of like pick the characters that you want to use, and then that's how you decide who you then want to go and Dokkan Awaken. Um, I will warn you, though, that just because you pick your favorite character, like let's say you love God Goku, and you want to pick this guy, not every character in the game right now is super good. This game is eight years old, they haven't been able to... Um, reawaken all of the old characters they haven't been able to um, and some of the ones that they already have awakened like um, again which is called Extreme Z Awakening some of the characters that they've already done that happened a long time ago and so not every character is going to be a super winner if you're looking for modern units I know that's kind of hard to figure out whenever you're a new player um, I highly recommend watching YouTube videos from people who have been playing the game. You can go check on Twitter, on uh, Reddit, see what teams people are using to clear events, and kind of get a feel for uh, which units are new, which ones are good, and difficult content. But when in doubt, if you're ever not sure, what you can do is look at a unit's passive. So if we look at this god Goku, it's just attack and defense plus 80% when performing a super attack. And then let's compare it to something like this kid Gohan, who's a little old now, but he's uh, still more of a modern unit. And we see how much longer his passive is. It's not always like, uh, okay, this unit's passive is longer, so they must be better. But generally, if you're new, that's kind of like a safe rule. I mean, and you can look at it too and say, okay, this Gohan's getting 
158% defense at the start of turn. He's getting attack when attacking. He's getting additional attack and defense with that category, the Heavenly Events category ally attacking in the same turn. You know, it's like he gets an additional attack when he gets hit. So he gives all allies 3 key and 58% defense. Like, you can just look at it, have a very minimal understanding of the game, and go, okay, more numbers, more good, <laughs> you know? So that's kind of like a little rule that you can go by to look at a unit and go, okay, so like this trunks, boom, pretty long passive. You look at uh, this Goku, nothing here. So you can kind of get an idea of if you just have no clue where to start, no clue what units to put on your team, you can go, okay, which units, whenever they're awakened, have like the longest passive. I'm not going to say that's always going to lead to success because you can have a unit like this Trunks and Mai who have a really long passive, but they're kind of old now, so they're not really going to be much help to you. But if you're a brand new player and it's all you have, then it's a safe bet if you're choosing between a character like this Trunks and Mai and like this Super Saiyan 3 Goku who we just saw doesn't really have anything. So, once you've picked a leader, we kind of went over that. You know, how many characters do you have for your team? What team do they actually lead? Are they a 200% leader? That's kind of where you want to start is picking that leader. The next most important thing, like I mentioned, is awakening your units. So, that's, that's getting them to their LR state, getting them to their awakened UR state, you know, going to doing these Dokkan events and making sure that you have them at the max level that they can be. You're not going to get much value out of a unit that isn't fully awakened. Usually, they just those passives that they have before they awaken are not very good. They're, you're going to be using a significantly worse version of the unit in most cases. I'd say the next... Um, Sorry, uh, I'm off script a little bit here. Um, <laughs> so before you actually awaken your units, though, what you want to do is farm up your unit super attack levels. So awakening is very important. I always tell people, like, they, they come to me and they're like, what do I do? What, how do I build this team? What team should I use? And it's like, well, you have some good units, but you haven't awakened them. So awakening them is usually the most important thing. But before you awaken them, what you want to do is actually see if you can raise their super attack level. There are two major ways to level up super attack levels in the game. You can use um, super attack raising characters. If I go over here to the side, we can see they give out these, like these Grand Kais. And you can see here they just they level up a character's super attack level by one if you use them in training. We have the Elder Kais who do the same thing. We have these dozing Kais that give you a chance to level up the super attack. So what you want to do is make sure that you have these characters at their max super attack level because you will get so much more power out of them um, attack-wise, and it unlocks a portion of their hidden potential system, which we'll cover later. So if you're ever not sure... Um, oh, so, I'm sorry. So that's one way that you can level up their super attacks. The second way is there are some characters in the game that share the same name with another character. So for this Goku, for instance, in his base form, he's just base form Goku. There are free base form Gokus that you can farm up in the game to raise this character's super attack. I'm going to switch over to my desktop to show you guys a very useful resource. This is the Dokkan Wiki. Here... You can come to this website, it's just, uh, you know, if you type in Dokkan Wiki, it's pretty easy to find um, the hyperlink here. So, then you'll just, you can, if you want to see if a character's super attack is farmable, you can go to the name. You go to characters, the name. And in my example, we're going to this Goku. So we click on G for Goku, and we scroll down here. And we've got the Goku section right here. And this has every character whose name includes Goku in the game. So, in my instance, this Goku is just called Goku. So we can jump right down here to the Goku section, which you can see. If I go back, we want this card right here. That is right here. So we click on him. Uh, by the way, this site, not super mobile friendly, but you can use it. Uh, but I, if you're using it, I highly recommend using the desktop version. 
So then we can scroll down here and see they have all the characters' information on here, what categories they're on, how to awaken them. And then down here at the bottom, you can see these units can be farmed to raise the super attack level. And these are all units that you could obtain throughout the game that you can use to raise their super attacks without using Elder Kai's. It is very important as a new player that you try to farm up as many super attacks as possible using these free cards available to you and save your Elder Kai's for the units who really need to use them. If you're just going around burning Elder Kai's on all your units, you're going to run out super quickly. And then whenever you actually need them and you can't farm up a unit like, um, oh, what's a good one offhand? Um, like Kale and Khalifla, like this, uh, if I switch back, this LR Kale and Khalifla together, this duo card, there is not a free to play unit that shares the same name as them. Now, they are kind of old, you won't find much use for them at the moment, but like I said, it's still important to take every unit in your box, awaken them, get them maxed out as much as you can, prioritizing the ones that you can actually use on a team that you want to run right now. But over time, what you really want to do is make sure that you have all these units just awakened, ready to go for their eventual easy A's. Um, if they ever decide to do like a secondary easy A, because there's some characters in the game now. Just like as an example, um, who's a good one? Let me pull up like a really old unit here. Uh, probably get past him. Like this Tech Beerus right here, this is a very, very old unit. Um, but it's entirely possible, like, he's already received his EZA, as you can see here, he's at level 140. So, uh, maybe in the future, they've talked about in surveys giving these types of units, like, a second EZA. They don't have plans to do it at the moment, as far as we know. But, you know, my Beerus is ready to go in the event that they ever do that. So, that's an important thing you want to do. So... Uh, the Dokkan Wiki, like I said, very good resource. You can go to every character in the game and you can see, okay, let's take, oh, uh, let's just go to the O section. I don't know who's here. No, there's nobody in the O section. Let's go to, let's go to Vegeta. That's easy. Everybody knows Vegeta. You go to Vegeta. Let's say you got... So we have all the kid Vegetas. Let's say during the anniversary, you do a the ticket multi that gives you a free LR. And you pull this Vegeta right here, who awakens into an LR. And you want to see, okay, do I need to use Kai's on him or can I farm him up? You scroll right down here to the bottom and it shows you all the ones that can be farmed to raise their super attack. So... This is a very good resource, and it shows you right here where you actually acquire the units, what story event. So, and then you can scroll down here, and it shows you the drop rewards. So, this base Goku can be used to farm up other base Gokus. This Broly can be used to farm up other Brolies, and this Frieza can be used to farm up other Friezas. So, this is this is a really good event if you're looking for like ways to farm up units that you have. So. After you have raised a unit super attack to level 10, what you can do, and you don't actually have to wait until they hit level 10 to do this, but you won't be able to get the full benefit of it until you get them to level 10. So once they hit super attack level 10, you unlock their full hidden potential ability. Um, this is actually a bad example, but I don't think I have a good example. Okay, here's this Gohan. Perfect. So this Gohan right here, as you can see, is at 55%. This is the max hidden potential that you can give a unit without any dupes of the unit. So this is where you're, I was talking about the super attack level being important. You cannot access this bottom right path without having their super attack to at least level 6. And then once you get a dupe in like the bottom right section here and unlock these extra additional paths, you cannot rank these up unless you are at... Uh, I believe you can do some of them as you go up, but you cannot get all of them until you are at full SA level 10. So it is very, very important that you get units up to super attack level 10 to unlock this hidden potential system. Because this is what gives them their large boost to their stats. And it also gives them the ability to additional crit and dodge super attacks. So th this is very, very important to 
you know, building your team, having strong characters, really developing your box. So, once you've kind of dealt with, okay, we've picked my leader, I've leveled up their unit super attacks, I've put their hidden potential orbs in them. Uh, which, another note on hidden potential orbs, there's only a few ways to get those orbs at the moment. Uh, there are the, so like I mentioned with the, uh, with the Team Bardock and the uh, Ginyu Force um, farmable unit stages, the, the, the free-to-play teams, I, I mentioned how those units were on a rotation of, you know, AGL units on basically Monday, um, tech units on Tuesday, uh, Int on Wednesday, you know, so on and so forth. The Dokkan events and the daily Hidden Potential Orb stages rotate on that same basis so if i go to the events tab and i go to this growth tab which by the way you should be doing pretty much not everything in this growth tab but like the limited attempt stages like the turtle school training the this temporary meet event uh this is a weekly event you should be doing these things every day but the way you get orbs each week is by doing this activate your hidden potential event so today it's agl because i'm recording this on sunday evening tomorrow it will be tech the next day it will be int and it goes through a rotation like that except for in large celebrations where they'll open up every event on each day that's this is like the only consistent way to get orbs the other two major ways to get orbs is chain battle we have one of those pretty much every celebration now and then the world tournament which is every few months and the world tournament it's much more difficult to get the orbs um, there are some in the missions but in order to get really like large quantities you need to place high in the world tournament which can be difficult if you're a new player so chain battle is really what you want to aim for and i know a lot of people don't like chain battle because it requires you to have um very whaled out friends basically but you yourself in order to participate in it you need to set your 10 characters for super and extreme typing. But then after that, the characters in order that you need to actually obtain a high score, you only need three of those characters. And some of those chain battles, they use really common characters. Others, they, it's more rare. You need like the brand new summonable unit in order to get the highest score. But you can still participate and get a lot of rewards, get a lot of equipment, get a lot of potential orbs um, with just having a few units of your own. So that's... Those are really the only ways to get potential orbs. Sometimes they'll hand them out as rewards and missions. Sometimes with top grossing, they'll hand them out. And then extreme Z battles also tend to uh, give, they also give them out as rewards. So uh, th those are kind of your ways to acquire potential orbs. If you're a new player, it can be pretty tough. But you do also have access to Shinron in the quest mode. You can collect the Dragon Balls and wish for things. I believe some of those wishes are potential orbs. Uh, speaking on that, I would actually also recommend that you... Um, there's one wish. I don't remember exactly when it is. I think it's one of the beginner wishes that you have to do. But there's one, I believe, or at least it used to. I haven't done the quest mode in a long time. I've been playing my account for a very long time. So I haven't been able to actually collect these Dragon Balls in a long time. But... There was a wish that you could do that actually unlocked your extra item slots because I think as a beginner you only start out with three item slots um, and you only get to use one item of each. There's a wish that gives you access to all four item slots and you can use two of them each. So um, like if you bring a Senzu Bean, you get two instead of one in one of the item slots. And so you can bring a total of eight items as opposed to three, which is really good. So... All right, so we've picked our leader. Let's go do that. Ooh, let's actually go do this real quick. Let's let's build kind of a let's build a team. So let's say I have my. We'll just pick this kid Goku. So I've picked my kid Goku. I've leveled up his super attack here to level ten. I have Dokkan awakened him, and I have filled out his hidden potential system. As you can see, um, this kid Goku. I have all four dupes filled out, so he is rainbowed. He's at 100% activation. Um, the next thing you want to do, once you've kind of figured that out, you've ranked up all your units using those Ginyu Force and Bardock teams, is okay. Now I want to actually build around this unit. I want to build around this leader. I want a team that works. What do I do? 
And so you kind of look, what I would do is look at the kid Goku and you just want to sort by his leader skills. So Dragon Ball, Youth, and Exploding Rage. So we got Dragon Ball Saga, Youth, and Exploding Rage. And we want to see all three of them. So I'm setting it to partial match if I can ever type. All right, so see, we have 236 characters here to choose from. Uh, you know, that, that can be a difficult task. So it's like, okay, I have all these units now. Who do I actually pick? And so what I tend to do is look at the links, and I say, okay, these are kind of the links that we want to build around. Links are what actually give your characters a lot more power, a lot more effects, and it's very important that you rank these up. Um, you rank these up by doing pretty much any stage that gives experience. That's kind of the general rule. So, um, Dokkan events, quest mode, uh, the daily Roshi stage, those all give you a chance to level up your links. Um, the daily Roshi stage in particular has a higher link level rate than just an ordinary stage. So, be sure to do that, like I said, every day to make your characters more powerful. The best stages to actually link level on, like let's say you're like me and you just sit at work all day and you can just set your phone to the side and turn on auto mode and just let your characters link level uh, while you're working at work. Or, well, maybe you're not working, but that that's, you know, you get what I mean. You can just set it there, set it to the side and just auto while you're doing something else the rest of the day. The best stages to link level on are 29.3 in my opinion, for auto and 28.2. It just depends... I clicked on the wrong thing. Quest. Um, it just depends on which type of, like, gems you're trying to acquire. So I like 29.3. It gives green gems. It has, um, I believe, four guaranteed fights. I won't do it now because it would just add two minutes to the video for no reason. And then 28.2 is another one. It's a much shorter fight. I believe it has three fights, but it gives blue incredible gems which can be used to acquire um, some EZA medals, Kai's, units, things like that in those shops. So these are definitely gems that you need to acquire anyway. So just link leveling your units, getting them the full benefit of those links is definitely something you want to do. So let's just as an example here, let me pull up a character. I believe this pan I haven't link leveled at all. So we see here, All in the Family gives 15% defense at link level 1. Um, and Saiyan Lineage also just gives one key at link level 1. If I go to this Gohan, who I do have link leveled, we can see All in the Family gives 20% defense at full level 10 links. And Saiyan Lineage gives now 2 key and 5% attack and defense. Which, that doesn't sound like a whole lot, but whenever they're like all accumulated together giving you these extra buffs it actually does make your character a lot more powerful because these are true multiplicative buffs to your character so like let's say your character has a hundred thousand defense um start of turn with no links active if you're able to put a character next to them that has like um all in the family if i can ever click on it um, that's going to be a 20% boost, so your character will go from having 100,000 defense to 120,000 defense with this character next to them, which, you know, as defenses have gotten much higher, like now we're seeing characters with 700k defense, you know, 500,000 defense, that extra 20% buff has become a lot more impactful, so that extra, or I'm sorry, that extra 5% buff has become a lot more impactful for these characters, and things like say in lineage where it gives an extra key that is a huge buff for some characters because they don't really have key links or they don't have key in their passive or you'll want to put a character next to somebody else and they just don't have these key links that's why i mentioned earlier in the game that i don't really like this ultimate gohan here because his only key link is shocking speed and the characters that you want to use next to him for the most part don't have shocking speed i mean the gammas do but i if i'm running the gammas usually that's on their own rotation if I'm running Gohan, uh, who do I run next to him? Do I run this Trunks and Goten? Uh, for some of you, if you're new, maybe you can run him, but for high-level content, characters like this just don't hold up well next to him. So it's really disappointing to see a unit come out like this that their only key link is shocking speed. They don't really have a great key passive. In, in this game, you don't want to be struggling for key. You want to be hitting your super attacks to get the you know benefit from them. 
See, like in this case, Gohan, you hit his 18, or you hit, yeah, his 18 key, and he greatly raises defense. If you don't hit that, uh, he only gets a normal raise on his 12 key. And also, he gets benefits in his passive for getting higher levels of key. You know, if you hit 24, he becomes super effective against all types, which, if you're new, that may not mean much to you, but it basically equates to you're doing a lot more damage, which you want to be doing, so... That's the importance of key. So, that being said, if we go back and we want to build a team, it's like, okay, who do I want to build around? I already mentioned this kid, Gohan. If we look at it, he and this kid, Goku, they share the Innocence, which is an attack link. Uh, they don't share Demonic Ways. I don't think they share Saiyan Warrior Race. But they do share um, All in the Family, which is 20% defense. They do not share Saiyan Lineage. So that's kind of disappointing. They don't share Gaze of Respect. This link is kind of, eh. Same with Demonic Ways. But they share Fierce Battle. So that may not sound like a lot. They share the Innocence. They share All in the Family. And they share uh, Fierce Battle. That may not seem like it's like, oh, they only share three links. But this Gohan is one. He's kind of an exception. I probably shouldn't have started with him. Because he gives three key in his passive to all allies. That kind of makes up for the lack of key links on him. Um, by the way, if you were looking for that, it's down there at the very bottom. It's the last line. All allies, three key, and defense plus 58%. So that kind of makes up for him not having key links. And then they share innocence, which is 15% attack. And like I said, this all in the family link is a huge defensive buff. This 20% defense, you want this active if you can get it active. This can drastically change an abil a character's ability to tank. And then Fierce Battle is a pretty common one. Almost every unit that awakens with a Dokkan event metal will get Fierce Battle. Um, so that's just like a free... I don't want to say it's a free link, but it's a very common link that you'll have active. So in total, they'll share three key from this Gohan's passive. You know, they'll share... Oh goodness, I can't click on anything today. They'll share all in the family, which is 20% defense, and then 20% attack. So I would go ahead and put him on the team. Another thing to mention is know the character that you're building around. So in this instance, this Goku, if you read right up there on about the third line, uh, at the, also the end of the second, he gives Dragon Ball Saga or Youth Category allies two key and 50% attack and defense. So before I mentioned that this Goku and that Gohan do not share key links, but that's okay. The kid Gohan is giving Goku and himself three key, and then this kid Goku is giving the Gohan two key and this himself two key. So that's, they're already sharing five key between each other without key links. They share all in the family, which is 20% defense. So that's just, that's kind of how I go about looking at units. It's like, okay, they they don't actually share key links, but they're supporting each other. They're giving themselves key. They're giving themselves uh, defense from their passive. They're sharing one of the most important defensive links in the game for themselves. So I want these two together. Even though this Gohan's a little old now, he doesn't hold up super well in the most difficult content in the game. I still want those two next to each other. So then after that, it's like, okay, I'm still just assaulted with a million characters. I probably don't want this Frieza on the team, because if we look at his links, he's not going to share pretty much anything with these characters, you know. Kid Goku's not going to have big bad bosses, so... In fact, what I should probably do is only sort by super class units, because if I look through it, let me just sort to extreme real quick. I don't think there's really many characters here that I want next to uh, Kid Goku, with a notable exception of this Demon King Piccolo. They actually work really well together, and they do share several, well, maybe only two links, but it's like three key attack and defense, 7%. And Guidance of the Dragon Balls, which is 20% attack and 7% crit chance. Um, so they only share two links here. But he does actually share Demonic Ways with that kid Gohan. And that's two key 10% attack and defense. So this Demon King Piccolo can actually make a good spot on the team. He's a little old and he may be a little hard to acquire if you're a brand new player. Uh, because he's a world tournament unit. Uh, like he's acquired through world tournament summons. He at one point was available... Uh, through missions and uh, from the world tournament. Uh, but he, he no longer is. So you can only attain him through tickets at the moment. Which you get from playing the world tournament. And summoning on a specific banner. Um, 
and his passive may not look super crazy, but if you notice on that second line, he reduces damage received by 50%. That is an ability that holds up well across time. Um, that mixed with him raising defense on super attack really makes him hold up well over time. So he is actually a unit I would bring on this team. I'm going to go ahead and put him on here. But as far as the rest of these extreme type units, there's not really one that I would want to include on this team. So let me just sort by super only. That narrows down our options quite a bit. Um, so then we can kind of look through some more. This Android 8 actually came out on the same banner as Goku. Uh, these two work incredibly well together. If you notice, um, Android 8 here gets 20% uh, damage reduction. And then he gets an additional 30% whenever he has a Goku youth on the same term, which is the leader of the team. Uh, which, by the way, means that there will be two of them on the team. So getting this Android 8 next to that kid Goku shouldn't be very difficult. And then he gets a bunch, like, more buffs um, as the battle goes on. So he can end up with a total of, what is this, 80% damage reduction if he's next to kid Goku. And then kid Goku, if we go back and read his passive, if we look right down there at the very bottom, it says all allies uh, on the second to last line. Chance of performing a critical hit plus 8% and all allies damage reduced by 8% with 7 or more key spheres obtained. That's really good. That means he will be giving, if you can get him 7 key spheres, which you can do because he's a rainbow orb changer. If we read a few more lines up, it says, um, oh, where is it? randomly changes a key sphere of a certain type to rainbow key spheres. So he's creating these rainbow key spheres, which means that uh, if you don't know, rainbow key spheres can allow you to connect across the board. They're kind of like a free space. So if you pick a yellow orb and then there's a rainbow orb next to it, they will auto connect and you can connect to another yellow orb. So it makes them very easy to connect with orbs across the board. So getting seven orbs is not super terribly difficult with this kid Goku. So that means that you can give this Android 8, a total of 88% damage reduction if they're next to each other, which is really good. Um, and then they're sharing, I believe, the Incredible Adventure, which again is um, three key, attack and defense 7%, guidance of the Dragon Ball, so just 20% attack and 7% crit chance, and Fierce Battle, which is another 20% attack. So they work really well next to each other, and Android 8 is basically unkillable. Um, and then I kind of look through the team, and it's just like, Okay, the, uh, I kind of look through, and it's kind of hard at this point if you haven't been playing for a long time. So this is why I kind of recommend, you know, watching some YouTube videos, seeing which videos are good or not. Because you're just, now you're sitting here, it's like, okay, I, I know, like I have this Grandpa Gohan, how well does he do? He's got a decent passive. Um, you know, like, who do I choose next? Um, if, you know, this, it, it gets kind of hard. So like I said, you want to kind of go around links. Um, and then just, it's hard to say you just have to know which characters are good or not, um, which you can figure out over time by using them. You know, just because a unit's an LR, like this LR Yamcha, doesn't mean that they're going to just be insanely good. Um, so, it, it, a lot of this game does revolve around you playing the game, knowing which units are good, um... You know, just getting used to taking them into different fights. And it really depends on what you're doing. If you're just going into, like, a Dokkan event to farm some medals, you can probably get away with just about any of the characters on this list as long as they're awakened and ready to go. But if you're going into something like Red Zone, it really does take time of just, okay, I'm going into this event. I want to see how this Kale will do. She seems like she would be decent because she gets 60% damage reduction from the start of turn. Um, so you, you just have to take her in there and see how she does. Um, I wouldn't recommend using her. She's not, she doesn't actually hold up very well, you know, even though this Demon King Piccolo does. But uh, getting into the specifics for all these units is kind of a tricky task. But in this case, if I was running this team, the next unit I would actually bring is this Carnival Goku. Um, he, you probably don't have this guy if you're a brand new player. He came around during the Worldwide Celebration in September, kind of August time last year. Um, the reason I would bring him is he guards. You see where it says, oh goodness, I, these passives are so long now. Yeah, about midway through it says guards all attacks when HP is 60% or more. And then he also has an active skill here, which means he, like, has a special attack he can do, like, mid-turn without collecting orbs. 
And then he also has a revive, which I believe is at the end of the passive. Um, so if he gets KO'd with a certain HP left, you will actually revive and gain HP back. And then on his super attack effect, on his 18 key, he's actually stacking defense. So this is a very versatile unit. They guard, they stack defense, they have a revive. This is definitely a character I want on the team, even though they don't really share key links with anybody. Um, this is an exception where it's like, okay, they're only going to share a few links. But we do have this Gohan who's giving support to all allies. Another thing about this Goku is that he's building up, see how he has 5 key, and then he gets an additional 5 key per hit. So he's kind of key, like self-sufficient. This Goku, like I said, is giving himself two key. And then he's also creating rainbow key spheres. So it, it's just much easier to collect orbs on the field whenever they're together. So that's kind of, whenever I'm thinking about these teams, it's like, okay, I have this, I'm going to have two rainbow orb changers on the team. Uh, so orbs are going to be very plentiful. So even though this gay guy may not share links with anybody... He's very key efficient on his own, and key should be plentiful enough on the board that I don't really have to worry about, okay, will he be able to super? Will he be able to get his stacks on 18 key? You know, I don't ever want to be stressed out thinking about, oh man, I brought this, I don't know, dead Yamcha whose passive is defense reduced to zero at the turn. What do I do? You know, it's like, I, I don't, I don't want to be worried about unit supering, so... That, that's something I really look at. I, the worst part of this game is whenever you get characters together who just share no links. They don't have any key. There's no rainbow orb changers. And you just get stuck in a situation where you can't do anything because you're unable to collect any key. Like that, That's not fun because then you're just watching these old normal attacks that aren't very good. Most of the characters nowadays are getting benefits on super attack. If we go back, I'm using this kid Goku as a big example. But if we notice... Um, you know, he gets attack and defense when performing his super attack. So it's like you, these characters now, they need the super. They don't just get by with normals anymore. Um, so you really want to make sure that you're able to get these key effects that you're, you know, doing. You're building a team that works well together. You don't want to just throw a character on there because they sound cool. Like, um, for instance, I did a run, if you go on my channel, where I believe I went against Broly. And I decided to get a little cute, and I brought this Janimba on the team, who doesn't share links with anybody, I don't think at all, and um, other than maybe Fierce Battle. And this Janimba, if I read him, he needs to go in slot one or two um, in order to guard. Uh, if you can see there, it says, you know, guards all attacks within the same term as the first or, ta first or second attacker in the turn. And so if I bring him on this team, it's like, okay... Let me think about my rotations, because the way this game works is whichever characters you keep in the first attacking turn and the second second attacking, or I guess I should say slot, the first attacking slot and the second attacking slot, those units will always stay on that turn. So if I put um, Goku and Gohan, if I get them turn one and I put Goku in slot one and Gohan in slot two, then whenever I come back to that rotation on turn three, those two characters will still be there, and a different character will be in slot three. Um, so if I'm thinking about the rotations of this, it's like, okay, one of my rotations, I want to be Kid Goku, and I want to be Kid Gohan. And then on the other rotation, I want to be the friend Kid Goku, and I want the Android 8 next to them. So those are the four characters that I want to always stay on those, return, on those turns next to each other. And then the... Uh, Demon King Piccolo, the Carnival Goku, and the Janimba are the ones that I want floating between the turns, just there temporarily. Um, they'll basically come back every three turns, I believe it is, because if you float a character off, that's what we call it. If you put them in slot three, you're floating them off. If you put a character in that slot three and you float them off, um, they won't come back. If you put them there on turn one, put them in slot three, float them off, they'll come back on turn four. So then if you put them in slot um, four again... Or, so, I'm sorry, slot three again on turn four, they'll come back on turn seven. That sounds, like, really complicated until you kind of see it happen in-game. I probably didn't explain it too well. But it, it, you can't really put this Janimba in slot three because his most powerful asset that he has is his guard. Um, probably the second most being his ability to nullify Key Blast supers. So, 
if you go watch that video, I kind of got to a point where I was like, well, I don't really want to keep Janimba on rotation, but I can't float him off here because if there's a super attack at the end and he doesn't nullify it, which he only has a 50% chance to do, then I'm just – I'm stuck here. I'm a sitting duck. So I had to put him in the middle slot. It broke up my rotation. It caused problems. So that's not really a situation I want to be in, so I wouldn't bring someone like that. Because, it, you know, he has restrictions to him. He has conditions that I can't really fulfill if I want to run this team smoothly. Um, so as far as who I would bring as the last character on this team, if I was on JP, this Gohan is easy aid. Um, and he's very powerful, so I could bring him. Um, let's see, most of these characters are kind of outdated now. Um... That's another thing too, just because like a unit is an LR, like I said, I think I mentioned this when I was talking about the Yamcha, but just because they're an LR doesn't mean they're necessarily more powerful than another character. It really just takes um, getting familiar with the game, how things work, you know, which characters are powerful, which one's not, uh, to figure out who you want to bring on teams. Uh, this Jackie Chun is actually really good. I had a showcase of him go up, I believe by the time this video goes up it'll have gone up the day before against the metal cooler core and i mean this jackie chun is only 55 percent um in the hit potential system because i don't have any dupes in him but with his 50 percent damage reduction that he receives against one anime enemy he was able to hold up decently well against the hardest physical boss in the game who has type advantage over him so i could put him on the team and he shares you know several links you know we've got guidance of the dragon balls incredible adventure um, things like that. I, I think he has Kamehameha. He'd have that with the Tech Goku. So I could bring him on the team. He also has, I believe, Shattering the Limit and Legendary Power with this uh, Demon King Piccolo. So I could bring him on the team and it would work well. If I was going into Super Battle Road, I can tell you I would bring this Gotenks right here who's very powerful. He's available on every banner. He can actually triple super attack. And each super attack raises his defense and has a medium chance to stun all enemies, meaning he attacks all enemies. Each one of those enemies has a 30% chance to be stunned. That is very powerful for Super Battle Road. So if I was going in there, I would bring him. And that's where team building really comes to, what am I doing? Am I just going into a Dokkan event to have fun? Okay, I can bring uh, just which, pretty much whoever I want. You know, um, I could bring... Oh, who's a good example? Um, I don't know. Let's just say I could bring this Xenopan. You know, she's got dodge. She's got a um, stun in her passive. So, or I'm sorry, in her super attack effect. So she's, you know, fun to use. I could use her in super battle road. I could use this pan who's also got a chance to dodge. Um, you know, she's brand new. If Again, if I'm going into just a Dokkan event, if I wanted to just be fun, I could bring like this kid broly just because it's like the only character i have or something like that if you're brand new so it really comes down to what are you trying to run what are you trying to do you know how powerful do your characters need to be to take on an event how well do they work with the other units around them um i really am at a loss as to who to bring i've been using this team all day i'd probably just bring jackie chun honestly uh, by the time he's rainbowed he'd be able to hold up well you know this goku released in 2021 as the worldwide download celebration unit and he stacks defense on both or i'm sorry on 12 key um and he can super attack multiple times in a turn so he's a powerful character that you could bring so it really just comes down to how well do your units work together um looking at this you know most of my characters it actually tells you right here so they share the innocence which is 10 percent. also for some reason this tab only shows it as excuse me level one links so you won't really get to see the full benefit unless you go check the characters themselves. But this shows you what they share and like who you'd be able to link up with. So we have them sharing the innocence. We've got demonic ways, which is key and attack and defense at level 10. You know, we've got Sam warrior race all in the family infighter. We can see that this team, you know, they link well. We don't have to really worry about having a character not having links active because they all kind of just go together. Well, they all fit a theme and that's really what you want to go for when you're building a team. Um, another tip I would have just to kind of close out this video, I know probably nobody made it this far, this is an hour long video, but I, I would recommend not re-rolling your account pretty much ever. 
uh, this ta- this game is eight years old now. It takes time to build up a team. It takes time to gather characters, awaken them, acquire resources. You know, it's like I've been playing since around the second year anniversary, um, around that time. So I've been in this game for pretty much six years now, and you know, I, I have a top level account because I've put the time in. I've learned as the game grew. If you're brand new, this probably seems super overwhelming, um, and you just may want to get the shiny new units every time. But that's not always conducive to growing your account, getting more powerful characters. Um, you know, for instance, if I had just rerolled, I wouldn't have access to this Demon King Piccolo probably because he's just not available easily anymore. Um, I gathered him at the time that he was out. So you can still earn him. Well, I say earn. You can still summon for him with the tickets you earn from the World Tournament, but he's not just readily available like he was whenever he first came out. Um, so it, it's just very important to put the time in, you know, develop your account, do your daily stages, do your weekly orb event, you know, farm up that Ginyu Force team so that you have a team to go and do Dokkan events with while you're kind of gathering these new summonable characters. Um, put in the time to your account, and then you'll, you'll kind of learn how to team build. You'll learn which units you like, which ones you don't, which ones are powerful. What is the community using to clear events? Uh, do I have those units available to me? So you, you, you learn and you do all these things just as you play. The more you play, the more you learn. From the surface, this game definitely just looks like an easy bubble popping game. But the more you dive into it, the more complex you find out uh, – or the more complexity you find with the team building. You can't just put – you know, six units together and expect them to work super well most of the time. Um, it says, like, a, another good example of, like, units working together. There's, you know, this cooler. Um, he leads a very powerful team, terrifying conquerors or movie bosses. Uh, you can just, like, pretty much sort by his team and find just powerful characters um, on here. It's like, boom. It's like, okay, who do I bring? Let me take off Extreme STR. It's like, okay, this Golden Freeze is like brand new. He's on the team. Bring him. Uh, this, let's see, down here we got this Metal Cooler. He's brand new. He fits on the team. The generally, newer units are going to be more powerful. Occasionally, you'll run into an issue like this Broly. He's not super good for, uh, like, Red Zone, but he actually is very powerful for Super Battle Road. If you haven't watched my Super Battle Road showcases of him, I mean, he just absolutely wipes the field clean. So it, it, there are uses for characters. You know, we can throw Janemba in here, and we don't really have to worry. Like, he can be our slot one unit. That's – I forgot to mention that, but that's actually an important thing you want to consider when team building. It's who's going to be in your slot one because the importance of slot one is characters can get hit from both sides before they attack and after they attack. Uh, most characters in the game these days need to attack first – in order to gain their full defensive ability. So having characters like this Golden Frieza who gets 90% damage reduction at the start of turn. And this Janemba who has guard and is just very powerful. Uh, he can nullify Key Blast super attacks. That's like invaluable is having these slot 1 characters thinking about who you're going to put in slot 1. Are you going to put a dodge character? That that can be good if the, if the event allows dodging. Uh, guarding characters are usually pretty good. Uh, occasionally you'll run into the god guard characters that don't quite have enough defense um but generally they're still better than a unit that doesn't have any guard you know so um uh, you know we can throw another golden freeze on this team that has 80 percent damage reduction or um even this um golden freeze who's available on every banner and he gets 90 percent damage reduction as long as your hp is above 40 percent so it, it's super easy to just throw together teams with, like, these newer units, and then you can look and see, okay, what are our usable links? And in this case, uh, we have this Big Bad Bosses links, which is 25% attack and defense that's shared across most of the units, except for, like, these two defensive walls here. But you would have units floating around that you can get active to make sure that these characters have their powerful links active. Uh, the reason these guys work so well together... I kind of brought it up, but, like, they have Big Bad Bosses, which gives 25% attack and defense. They have Thirst for Conquest, which gives 15% uh, attack and defense at level 10. Like, if I go here. So, Big Bad Bosses, boom. 25% attack and defense at level 10. Metamorphosis. 
This gives 10% attack and defense and 5% HP recovery. We have Thirst for Conquest, 15% attack and defense. And they all fit under Cooler's leader skills. So that's... That's... Links are, like, the most important thing to me when you're team building. So whenever... It's just... How do I build a team? Who do I build a team with? It's like, well... Start with the characters who share links. Start with the characters who support. Start with the characters who rainbow orb change and just fit well on those teams. That's kind of what I look for when it's like, okay, I'm building a team. What am I looking for? Who are my slot one units? Who are my guarding units? Who are my tanks? Who are my damage units? And a lot of that, like I said, comes with just playing the game over time um, and just learning as you grow. If you made it to the end of the video or if you just skipped here, Thanks for watching. I appreciate it. If you have any questions about team building, I can try to answer them. Leave, leave them in the comments. Um, you can tweet teams to me on Twitter. I can try to answer. Uh, just let me know. Again, I appreciate you watching. This video ended up being an hour long of me just rambling, probably nonsense about how to build a team. But I've seen so many questions about it that I wanted to kind of cover the topic and get uh, my thoughts out there on the issue. I tried to go on the script, but I deviated from it greatly. <laughs> so this is probably just a bunch of rambling nonsense. Um, again, thank you for watching. I appreciate it, and I'll see you guys in the next video.